It's a real pleasure to introduce Dr. Mohamed Rezek as our WIND seminar speaker today. Dr. Rezek uh, obtained his PhD in condensed matter physics from the University of Ottawa in uh, 2002, working with Professor M.A.R. LeBlanc. Then he joined the National Institute for Nanotechnology, NINT, in Edmonton uh, to work with Bob Walkoff uh, in the molecular scale uh, devices group. There he used uh, scanning tunneling microscopy, STM, to investigate the characteristics of nanometal semiconductor contacts and the electrical conductivity of uh, individual molecules. He built a field iron microscope, FIM as it's called in NINT, and developed a new patented technology for fabricating extremely sharp tips uh, with an average radius of less than a nanometer and terminated uh, by a single atom. His work on single atom electron and ion sources has been featured in several reputable media sources, including Canada Global TV, the Science Journal, and the Discovery Channel. It was recently se selected for a Guinness World Record as the sharpest man-made object. From 2006 to 2009, Dr. Rezek was a senior research engineer at the Institute of Materials Research and Engineering, Emory, uh, at the University of Singapore. There he designed and built the first, uh, actually I think that's a... The uh, same field microscope. Pardon? Is it at the NUS or is it at... Um, NUS, yeah, NUS, NUS yeah. yeah. At NUS. Mm -hmm. There he designed and built the first FIM microscope in Emory and took charge of the molecular interconnect project that involves the design and construction of an integrated machine composed of FIM, four probe, STM, and low temperature STM. In August 2009, uh, he joined Khalifa University of Science and Technology uh, and Research as an assistant professor of physics. So please welcome Dr. Rezek, whose talk is entitled Fabrication of Nanotips with a Single Atom Apex and Their Applications in Nanotechnology. Thanks, Arthur, for, <laughs> thanks, uh, Arthur, for the nice introduction. And uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be here with you to talk about this work and to learn about your uh, fabulous and interesting uh, institute, uh, uh, Waterloo Institute uh, uh, for Nanotechnology. Um, so my talk, uh, as Arthur mentioned, uh, will be talking to you about some work I started uh, some time ago in NINT, but I continued uh, this research in Singapore and I'm still working on this uh, until this moment, uh, which is the uh, fabrication of nano tips. Um, and uh, so uh, we'll give you some brief uh, review about these tips and why we use those tips. I'm currently uh, an assistant professor of physics uh, at Khalifa University. Uh, Khalifa University is located in Abu Dhabi, and Abu Dhabi is the capital of the United Arab uh, Emirates. Um, in general, tips are, as most of you know, they are tabard needles that uh, terminate with a very sharp and uh, mostly a uh, few tens of nanometers. Uh, so, and th these are some pictures about how the typical shape of tips. So, uh, if we just do rough uh, chemical etching, electrochemical action of tips, and th that's how they look like under the optical microscope. If you look at them under more uh, higher magnification microscopes, that's how they look under the uh, s uh, scanning electron microscope. But uh, as you know, these uh, electromicroscope don't give us enough pictures to characterize the tip of the end of, the, of the, these uh, tips. Uh, so the most powerful uh, machine or microscope to look at the structure of these tips is the field ion microscope. We can actually look at the atomic structure of these tips. We'll talk uh, briefly uh, about these microscopes uh, after we, uh, some uh, introduction. So uh, what we see here actually is the tip apex, and these rings actually are atomic rings, and these uh, tiny spots are individual atoms. So we'll talk about in details shortly. So where do, you, do we use these uh, tips or nano tips? If we look at most of uh, the ultra high resolution microscopes, uh, or uh, if we go to any uh, nano center like uh, Win uh, Center here, or NENT, or wherever you go, they mostly have scanning tunnel microscope, they have TM microscope, they have um, STM microscope, and so on. So most of the high resolution scanning electron microscope, 
they use a cold field emission source. A cold field emission source means very sharp tip as an electron source. I'm not going to talk about these machines. We'll just mention them briefly because it's very in the scope of this topic. So these are a typical picture of scan electron microscope where we deposit uh, na uh, nanogold particles or, or island on a semicon semiconductor substrate. Now, Hitachi recently moved to cold field emission gun as a source of their electron microscope. They want to adapt this technology because they think it will provide a higher resolution down to 1.5 nanometer if they use cold field emission source. But for this uh, cold field, field emission source, they need a very good vacuum. So the vacuum around the tip must be very, very good. Uh, even in um, uh, transmission electron microscopes, now they can go down to atomic resolution. And this picture shows us the lattice structure of graphene. And Joel also recently, they are adapting this cold field emission sources uh, to enhance the performance of their transmission electron microscopes. Uh, these are just examples where we can use these single atom tips. We can use them also in focused ion beams to improve the resolution of the lithography. As we see, we can uh, write the structure of any logo of anything on a piece of hair. Uh, and also, the sharper the tip uh, end, the higher the resolution that we can get. So this tip can be attached to the uh, liquid metal source, and the, t the, s the liquid will diffuse on the uh, tip end. So the smaller the tip end, the, the higher confined uh, uh, ion beam that we can get, which results in higher resolution. Uh, so most of electron microscope uh, scanning or, or uh, electron beam lithography nowadays, they use either th uh, thermoionic source or uh, Shakti, uh, Shakti sources. Uh, but now the, there's a trend to use cold field emitters because uh, the source size is much smaller, but, and also the energy is more confined, so they can get uh, energy spread down to 0.2 to electron volts, rather than few electron volts in traditional uh, electron beam lithography machines. So these are just examples I'm mentioning to draw your attention the, to the importance of these nanotips. Recently, uh, and um, I just knew that also when has acquired this machine, it's called the scanning helium ion microscope. This is the most advanced microscopy now uh, instruments in, uh, uh, in, like in imaging. Uh, so they use very sharp tip with a few atom end, trimer like this, and they use one of these atoms as a source of helium ions. So they introduce helium in the chamber, and uh, by applying a, a high potential, high voltage on the tip. So this generates a high field at the end, which in result uh, ionize the atoms, uh, the helium atoms around, and it creates helium ions, and these ions, uh, ions, uh, ions will be ejected and uh, sent through um, an accelerator and collimators to be used for scanning the surface and imaging the surface. And this picture shows the difference between traditional electron microscope and helium ion microscope, and you can see the, different, the difference in contrast in the image resolution. And uh, fortunately, this machine is available here in Wern. I just learned that. Um, this is another example of the importance of these steps. As uh, you, all, uh, you may are aware of that in a scanning tunneling microscope, we use a sharp needle to scan the surface. So we bring a sharp needle close to the surface. Uh, and when this needle is in the vicinity of the surface within a few angstrom uh, distance, so, uh, and we apply a small bias on the tip, so electrons will tunnel from the end of the tip into the surface, and by having a feedback loop to control this current, mm, uh, and uh, as we scan the, uh, move the tip around, so the tip will move up and down based on the uh, structure of the surface. So if the tip is sharp enough, we'd be able to see the atomic structure of the surface. And what we see there are individual atoms on the surface. So the sharper the tip, if the tip is sharp enough, we can see individual atoms. So these are two examples. Here, this is a silicon 100, where we see atomic lines. These are lines of atoms and uh, the atomic uh, terraces. Uh, this is due to the structure of the surface. We cannot see as individual atoms, but we can see atomic lines. And here, uh, this is a different structure. We can see individual uh, atoms. 
if the tip is not sharp, won't see this, these details. We see just like fuzzy surface. Uh, in uh, atomic force microscope also, if the tip is very sharp, we can see atoms, we can see also recognize the atomic uh, defects. We can, if there's any missing atoms and so on. But the principle here is different. Here we, we detect the force between the tip and the surface, either the physical force or the chemical bonding force. Uh, and by detecting the deflection of the cantilever, we can convert this into uh, an image. Um, so if in all of these cases, we need sharp tips to uh, achieve such uh, resolution. Now, back to our topic about the tip, because what I showed you the applications, but now we'll go back to the, the topic of this uh, uh, presentation. How do we make these tips? How do we make such sharp tips? Now, the first thing we start with is the tool to look at these tips, to characterize these tips, which is the field eye microscope. So this field eye microscope can uh, be, uh, this is presumably the first microscope enabled human beings to see atoms. It was actually a very, very old uh, invention. It was invented in early 50s, it's more, like more than 60 years now. Um, but uh, unfortunately, people haven't used it very often, probably due to the limitation of the applications of these steps, because at that moment they didn't know what to, what to do with these steps, but now we know what to do with them. That's why now it came into stage, people are now paying more attention to this uh, technology. Now, what is the field iron microscope? Field iron microscope is actually a very simple uh, instrument, a very simple uh, machine. Uh, we need a vacuum environment, you need a vacuum chamber. Um, we, in this chamber, we place a tip in front of a phosphor screen, but phosphor screen alone might, might, might not be enough. We need to have a, an intensifier, image intensifier, what, what they call it micro channel plates, to intensify or to uh, increase the number of electrons that uh, be created here. Um, and we, um, we introduce a little bit of helium into this chamber, but we have to start with a very good vacuum around 10 to minus 10 or 10 to minus 9 tor. Uh, we introduce helium up to 10 minus 6 tor. Uh, then we apply a high voltage up to 20 kilovolts, depends on the initial tip uh, size. Now, uh, when uh, helium, uh, now what's going to happen uh, if we have a helium uh, atom? close to the tip, so this is the uh, energy uh, band structure of the helium. If the helium is close, uh, and uh, the, uh, also the, the vacuum barrier here will bend due to the high electric field. Now, uh, an electron would tunnel from the ground state of the helium into the Fermi level of the tip. So this creates, when, when a helium atom leaves or lo loses an electron, it becomes uh, a positive ion. And the tip is already positively biased. So what's going to happen? The ion will be expelled, will be ejected from the surface, from the position where it has been created. Okay? So it takes the information where it is created here, and it goes, it hits the screen here, and it creates a spot. So these events take over all the surface happens all over the surface. And what we get, we get such a nice uh, structure. We get a uh, uh, structure like this. We get these concentric rings represent the plane of the surface, of a particular plane on uh, the surface. So each spot here represents the, ato the, the position of the helium atom where it was ionized. So this, in other words, represents the position of the atom on the tip surface. So these are actually uh, real, real atoms. Uh, but why do we get the structure? And this is very simple, actually. If we get, uh, uh, so for instance, tungsten is a BCC uh, structure. It is a, has a lattice, uh, BBC lattice structure. If you get a bulk of, of tungsten and you make a spherical cut, just make a spherical cut, 
can do it also in the computer, you get a, a picture like this, just by simple simulation, which confirms that this is a real structure. And by the way, many years ago, people have already uh, built uh, uh, maps for these uh, stereographic uh, projection uh, uh, structures, and we can identify, in fact, what uh, for each plane, uh, what uh, each plane is. We can define each plane. For instance, this plane, this atomic plane is 110, this is uh, 1 to 1, this is 0, 1, 1, and so on. So we, we can easily identify each uh, atomic plane. And by knowing these atomic planes, this, this would help us later to estimate the tip size. Just from simple geometry, if we know the spacing between atomic layers, and we know the mirror indices of each plane, and we, so then we can know the angle between them, we can simply calculate the radius of the tip. Uh, for instance, a tip like this, if we calculate it, it would be around 15 nanometer or 16 nanometer in radius. So we can estimate the tip radius from, uh, from just knowing the uh, atomic planes and the number of atomic layers between planes. Now, um, in early 90s, people started in IBM to uh, fabricate nanotips. And the first guy who started with this work, uh, his name is Fink, in IBM. What he did at that time, they did ion spattering for the tip, and then it cleaned the surface, and later they deposited ex external atoms on the surface, and just by chance, they might get a single atom at the center, and they call it single atom tip. This, 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 was, the first, this was the first attempt. Later, uh, Ben and his group, uh, I think in France, they did a more reliable, or they invented a more reliable technique. What they did, uh, they applied a high field on the tip, and at the same time, they heated the tip to a high temperature, around one third of it is melting point. So when, have, when we have, hot atoms, mobile atoms, and high electric field. So atoms now start to diffuse along the electric field. So when atoms diffuses, and they form like a, a pyramid or a conical shape, and they ended up with single atoms. So this was the first reliable technique for fabricating such um, single atom tips. The other method was invented by uh, Song and his group in Taiwan, and this is the uh, physical Senati group, actually I visited them a few years ago. Uh, uh, and this is, by the way, the, the institute where Professor Wu uh, was working in. So what they did, similar to the previous one, but they, uh, depo uh, they deposit another material on the, the tip, like for instance, they, they use a tungsten 111 and they, didn't, they deposit palladium, and then they apply a high field to, uh, uh, and uh, they, they heat the tip actually without applying a field, and atoms, they would diffuse to do the surface reconstruction and make like a pyramidical shape very easily. Uh, later, they also introduced the oxygen to enhance this uh, treatment. So this is, these are the most uh, popular techniques for fabricating sharp tips before our uh, method. Uh, there's another method, but I, I don't call it a method. Uh, this <laughs> depends, actually, if, if you have any dirty tip, any dirty tip, and uh, you apply a high field, the dirt will diffuse on the tip to form like a very sharp thing. But what, what, what we don't know what that thing is. Now, we come back to our method that we uh, developed in NINT uh, in 2003, and we got a, uh, a patent, uh, we applied the patent in 2005, I guess, and it was rewarded in uh, 2008. So, and this method, we use uh, uh, an, uh, etching, an etching, etching gas, or uh, basically nitrogen here. We introduce nitrogen to the chamber. So we use this method, uh, so we can fabricate single atom tips uh, <coughs> with less than one nanometer, like we said. And we can also modify the structure, not, not just fabricating tips, we can mod, uh, single atom tips, but we can modify the structure even atom by atom. 
and we can get the size that we want, not just one atom. If you want like three atoms, four atoms, we can get them. And uh, we can get uh, one nanometer, two nanometer, depends on the applications that we need these tips for. Um, so what is this uh, field assisted etching technique? So uh, we start with a clean tip like this one. So we have to get the same picture like I showed you earlier with this atomic rings and so on. Uh, and we have to keep a high voltage on the tip and the high field, but to a point we don't evaporate atoms. By the way, if we increase the field on the tip to a very high level, we start evaporating the uh, metal atoms, the, the same uh, material atoms. But we don't want to get to that point. We want to keep the field at a, at a level where we, okay, we can see the image, but we don't want to evaporate the actual atoms on the tip. And then we introduce nitrogen gas, just nitrogen molecules. And now nitrogen molecules have an, an ionization field less than the imaging field of uh, tungsten. So the nitrogen doesn't like to reach here. Why? Because the field is high. If it comes here, it will get ionized. Then it will fly away. Then uh, nitrogen likes to settle on the sides, on the shank, the tip shank. When it sits here, it doesn't like to stay on the surface. It, it tends to diffuse into the surface. When it goes in, it dissociates and diffuses in, but it, what, what's going to happen, it will push up the actual metal atoms out of the surface. So this creates, just from simple physics, creates a local protrusions there and enhances the field here. To a point, the, the field will here be, be, be very high and the atoms will be delocalized. So this will result in these atoms to leave the surface. So the, then we are creating an etching process, controlled etching process. So we etch atoms from the shank, but not from the top, from the end of the tip. So if we continue this process, then we can etch away all the shank atoms, but we leave the tip as is. So and, uh, if we continue with this process, so this will end up with something like this, very sharp, like conical shape structure. Uh, now, if we keep increasing the field, then we can we'll distract the surface. We'll remove the top atoms, and then we can make even uh, broader tip or plant tip. Uh, this is a typical model of the field eye microscope. So here we have uh, the screen, here we have the tip, we have the nitrogen source for etching, we have the helium. We need some pumping systems to maintain a good vacuum inside. Uh, and we need some voltage term, uh, feed throughs to apply voltages on the screen for imaging and also we need to apply voltage on the tip here. This is just a, a typical model of this field eye microscope. It's just a sim simple model, anyone can make it. So this reminds me of the first uh, field uh, eye microscope I built in uh, NRC. Actually, I did this in Ottawa before NINT started. Uh, uh, and then when I, after we moved to NINT, I integrated this into the uh, STM microscope. So we have a field eye microscope here. So we can make very sharp tips here, then we can move, move them to STM for imaging. And we tried once there several times, and we were able to get atomic structure right away. Once you make sharp tips and put it there, so you get the atomic structure, uh, atomic, structure or atomic uh, resolution on the surface. Uh, uh, also, I, did, I made another one in Singapore where I studied there the uh, field emission of uh, atomic tips. Uh, so um, what we did there, okay, uh, before we go to that point, we will show you the sequence of some images here. We start from a, a normal tip, let's say not blunt, this could be 15 nanometer radius. Uh, so we can define the orientation, the tip structure, everything. And this shows you the sequence, the tip apex shrinking here. So we have here a smaller tip, here even smaller. Here we have few nanometer apex. Here we only have two atoms. These are two, just two atoms. And here we have a single atom. And I can show you a movie with the whole thing. So here we start 
with the initial tip, say, and this is actually a uh, movie uh, shots taking over time intervals, but, as, but these are real time movies, okay? So look, look here, here we have a small tip, but we are able to uh, kick away all the side atoms, but we leave the center atoms at the center. So if you bear with us, you can see all the atoms around go, go away, but this atoms here stays there. So as, as you know, uh, as the tip gets sharper, the resolution increases. That's why you see the atoms get, get, uh, gets bigger. It doesn't get bigger, the resolution gets bigger, right? So then we end up with just uh, one atom at the end of uh, the tip. So this is just a real single atom. So, so how long such a process uh, takes? The whole process takes uh, around a couple of hours. Okay. It depends on the initial tip. If you start with a big tip, make it may take like three, four hours, but if it's uh, a modest step, maybe two hours. And but we can also uh, improve this process, so we can finish in less, probably a couple of hours. As this an example shows you how we can modify the structure atom by atom. So here, uh, if we have four atoms, so we can kick off, uh, remove them one by one. And here we have four, three, two, one. And actually we can model the structure as you see here, this is, these are uh, spherical models of the, uh, the actual uh, tip structure. Uh, this is another example of modifying the tip. This, this work was published uh, somewhere in uh, Microelectronic Engineering, 2009. Uh, this is uh, also how we can modify the tip structure atom by atom. This is another example how we can distract the tip to characterize the tip shape before it was, before, uh, how it was when, uh, before we distract it as a nanotip. So we can remove the atomic layers one by one, and each time we can estimate the tip shape, then we can build the structure, a model for the tip structure, for the whole uh, tip structure. Now, what is the uh, difference between this method and the methods that we uh, mentioned earlier, uh, the previous methods that other uh, groups have developed some time ago. Uh, so the, the previous method that I showed you, the only work with the single crystal wires and with a certain or orientation, uh, basically one, one, one orientation. Uh, but this method can work with any tip structure, even uh, amorphous tips it would work. Uh, and also this tip is, uh, you know, this process is monitored as you saw. We can monitor the process, the whole process, all the time, how the tip looks like at any time. But other ma methods, uh, people don't watch what is happening with the tip. They turn on the system, they apply field, and heat the tip up, and then later they will look at, uh, at it, how it looks like. They might get single atom tip or not. But here we watch the, pr uh, the tip all the time and see how it looks like. And if it is not single atom, we can wait until it becomes single atom. But if you don't want single atom, two, three atoms, we can tip, we can get any atomic structure we want. So this is the di main difference. And also it uh, produces a symmetric round tip, unlike uh, the other uh, methods. Uh, later I studied also the field emission of multiple tip uh, uh, structures. And the field emission is the opposite way of field ion microscopy. So here we apply a negative bias on the tip and uh, we apply the operational bias on the screen. So what we do, say so here the FIM, this is, this is FIM, an FIM image and this is the field emission where electrons come out from all over the surface and hit the screen. What we get there, we get bright zones. We don't, we don't get atomic structure with field, with field electron emission. We just get bright zones, depends on the work function of each particular plane, the size of each particular plane, the plane but we don't get atomic structure. And pe uh, pe people until now believe that we, it is impossible to get atomic structure in field emission microscope. But there was a theory, again, the people many years ago, they were more focused than us. They were developing very rigorous theory. 
And there was a guy who developed a theory in 1956, and he uh, predicted an atomic resolution on the tip if the tip is small enough or sharp enough. And I was able to prove this. I sharpened the tip to less than one nanometer and did field emission. And I found that the field emission is really localized to the atomic structure. And that wasn't seen before, hasn't never been seen before. Uh, and we can prove it here. So he, we can see, for instance, here we have atoms and we have the atomic or the electrons or the field emission out of these atoms. So, and this shows us that the field emission can be localized to the atomic positions if the tip apex is small enough. There's an interesting application, or now if we have a single atom, for instance, and we can use this as a single atom, and this is what is being used now in helium uh, scanning uh, electron microscope, they use a single atom as uh, an ion source. So we can use it as an ion source or an electron source. If we use it as an electron source, now electrons will come out of, from the same spot. So they will come, out at, they will come out at the same time and will hit the surface at the same time and will have the same phase, then we expect a coherent electron beam, highly condensed coherent electron beam. So what we see here is a, a highly focused electron beam come out of this single atom. So this is an electron beam hits the screen from this one atom. Now, what is the advantage of this? Now, if we put an object, and this was done before, I, I get back to this. This shows us actually, if we want to calculate the brightness of this single atom, the brightness is around, uh, it's, uh, say, four, the, four orders of magnitude higher than the brightness of conventional scanning electron microscopes, and it is uh, one order of magnitude higher than the brightness of other single atoms. But anyway, what is, uh, if, we, if we put an object in front of the single atom, what's going to happen? It's like you have a flashlight and you put an object in front of it and you project the object on the wall or the screen. Now, if this light is laser, you will see a hologram on the screen, right? So then we can get a holographic structure of this object on the screen. This is just uh, work that at uh, uh, preliminary stages, we need, still need to uh, elaborate on this. Uh, but this is a proof that the, th this uh, 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 interference pattern here, as we see there, this is uh, a proof that uh, the electron beam is coherent. So we prove the coherence of this uh, electron beam. Now, uh, one of the applications of these uh, uh, electron beams, the, the good thing about these electron beams is uh, because the energy is low, so we can use them for characterizing, for instance, uh, biological molecules, because if you put uh, a biological molecule in the conventional uh, electron microscope or TM microscope under high power, then you destroy it, right? So these are low power electron beams, then they are safe for characterizing biological molecules or any fragile nanostructures. Um, one of the other interesting applications of nanotips, so we can also use nanotips to manipulate molecule, molecules or atoms on the surface. For instance, this is an example, people were able to manipulate carbon monoxide molecules on the surface, moving molecules from one side to another, and uh, actually uh, Avaris uh, some time ago was able to, mani to move atoms. If you see here, atomic atoms were moved from one position here and put them back here, but we have to admit this work is not reproducible very well, and the problem was, uh, at that time, was uh, they don't have a method to fabricate nanotapes or single atom tapes in a reliable way. So, uh, but now I guess we can, will be close to this uh, level where, we, where we'll be able to manipulate atoms and molecules at any time because we have a good control on the tip structure. We can fabricate the tips uh, with 100% uh, uh, reproducibility. Now, the other application uh, is um, now touching or uh, characterizing nanostructures. Now, if you have a blunt tips like this and you want to touch a small 
object on the surface, then it would be very difficult, right? <coughs> so you need a sharp tip to touch. So then that's where uh, sharp tips have to be smaller than the object that you want to touch on the surface. So if you want to touch a molecule, you cannot come up with a 100 nanometer tip and you want to characterize the molecule because other things on the surface will interfere with your measurements and then your results will be useless. So you need a very sharp tip to be able to characterize tiny objects on the surface. The other application, if you want to make multi-probe measurements, like in this case now we have a four-probe STM and this is available now in the market. We can have a, a four-probe STM. I started this work actually with Omicron like uh, four years ago. Uh, we can have a very sharp four probes and we can place these probes on uh, metal islands on the surface and we can put uh, a molecule between them and we can use those metal pads as uh, connectors with the molecule or we can also and uh, grow some kind of uh, nanowires or atomic wires between the pads and the molecule to make some electrical measurements. Uh, so we started this work some time ago, so we were able to manipulate nano islands with sharp tips on the surface. This is how, uh, so we can make some marks, so we can get back to the same spot that we were working on. So we can manipulate the islands and then we can put the molecule here. But this work is not finished yet. We are in the process you know, of moving it. And this is also gives us an example how we can uh, place the probes close on, on the surface and we can't touch the islands uh, on the surface. This is, shows us, this is a picture from scanning electron microscope. Actually, in fact, here we mount scanning electron microscope in the top of the STM stage. So we can see where the tips are so this is a picture of the project that we're working on. We have here four probe STM. Here we have low temperature STM. And here we have the FIM where we can make the sharp tips. And we have here the prep chamber. This is a project we started with Omicron. And this is like a $4 million project. Uh, but uh, the machine now is, is being delivered to uh, Emory in Singapore. And uh, it is working now. Uh, so this is the headquarter of a micron in uh, uh, Wiesbaden in Germany. The other uh, application, we can use uh, these tips. Uh, we can have a molecule, for instance, between two sharp tips. This is one of the papers that they mentioned uh, about the uh, importance or the uses of these tips in uh, quantum interference effect transistors. So we can have a molecule between two sharp tips. If we run a current now, the current will go over two paths here, this path and this one. Now, if the current travels the same distance, then we expect destructive interference here due to the coherence of the current. Now, if we interrupt this coherence by another tip here, then we can use this tip as a gate, like switch, open and close, you know, the path. Then we can switch it on and off. So this would work as a molecular uh, transistor. One of the projects also I was working on, uh, I was able to mount uh, a single molecule, just to put a one molecule on at the end of the tip. Uh, many years ago, people were trying to mount, uh, 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 for instance, a carbothalocyanin molecule on a tip, but what we got, we got different molecules distributed all over the surface, but that way we were, they were not able to characterize an individual molecule because molecules have different shapes. Now, by reducing the tip size, we can confine the area where the tip can be mounted, where the molecule can be mounted. And I was able to mount just one individual molecule at the end of the tip and do field emission. So we can field emit electrons from out of the tip. And I got different structures or different, uh, um, uh, say, patterns. So we got one spot or two, three spots, and so on. And this work is still under investigation. It's not, it's like, these are just preliminary results. We're not going to publish this yet. Uh, but we are still, work this needs more work actually. Um, uh, and I'm invited uh, to give a talk in Germany about this work uh, next month. Um, so what we see here, that the molecule has uh, different shapes. And we can attribute this to the, different, to the position of the molecule on the surface because the molecule is hopping, is 
is dancing all over the surface, the molecule can sit on the surface like this, or like this, or like that, and each position will give us a different structure or different pattern. That's my understanding for the moment, but we still need to uh, study this further. Uh, and one of uh, my colleagues also have done some simulation. Uh, oops. So the molecule, uh, this is just by studying the physical interaction of the molecule on the surface, because at the room temperature, the molecule, the molecule is not that stable, and the molecule can have uh, different positions. Uh, and this is why we see different field emission patterns uh, on the surface. Left on time or finish? This is just simulation, just by studying the van der Waal forces. Uh, just the physical interaction is not actually uh, uh, well established. You know, we need to consider other parameters, other factors in this. Okay, before I finish, I would like to draw your attention to a very important thing here. Now, seeing a single atom at the tip, that doesn't mean the tip is very sharp. So I have published uh, two papers recently about this, uh, doing some analysis. Because, uh, okay, what we see in the field emission microscope, we see only this end, right? We don't know what, uh, what is underneath. So, uh, and, uh, but and sometimes we see this single atom, probably at five kilovolts, sometimes we see it at two kilovolts, uh, three kilovolts, sometimes one kilovolt. So what is the difference? The difference is how the base here look li looks like the tip base, and this is important. So now, um, I did some calculations, and here we have the electric field uh, for nanotips with different bases, from a few nanometer up to 50 nanometer, and here we have tips without the one nanometer end. And we can see here that sometimes normal tips can have higher field than single atom tips. So that, does, so that means that it's not, uh, uh, it is not necessarily that the single atom tip is sharp because, we, because if it is sharper than the other tip, the field here should be higher at the same applied voltage. Uh, so th that means that we have to look, we have to consider two things. We have to consider the structure of the tip and also have to consider the applied voltage that is needed to generate this image. The applied voltage here is important because the applied voltage gives, gives us an indication how sharp the tip is. If it is one volt, for instance, so this means the tip is sharper than the same single atom tip that is generated at five kilovolts. So this is one of the points that I want to uh, uh, indicate here that is of importance. So in conclusion, uh, the TIPS, the reliable nanotip uh, technology is highly needed for improving the uh, performance of uh, means the resolution and stability of scanning probe microscopes and electron microscopes. Nanotips are required for manipulation and characterization of molecules uh, as well as for uh, molecular electronics. We need them for nanometal semiconductor uh, electronic devices. Uh, either characterization and fabrication. Uh, this method will give us, uh, we can modify uh, tips with atomic precision and we can readily uh, get uh, single atoms then. And also can be regenerated. Uh, even if we lose that single atom, we can uh, restore it at any time. Uh, those nano tips can be also used to study the electronic states of surface atoms and molecules as we showed earlier. And by this, uh, Thank you for listening. Uh, thanks. Thanks very much. We have some time for questions. Yes. So, so how, how, how long can you work with, with one atom before it flies away? Or uh, okay, that's a good question because that was one of the things that we want to, uh, wanted to investigate with uh, 
with Hitachi because Hitachi is now is interested in these tapes and they are uh, testing them. So we were actually able to ship them to Japan, these single atom tapes. And uh, uh, in one experiment, I put this single atom tape on the shelf for a week and put it back in the system. So I only needed to do just normal flashing or heating and we got the single atom tapes right away. And, uh, and during the actual imaging, uh, if you're you know, just using it uh, mm. for imaging uh, um, or you know, uh, the, the uh, other applications, how long this uh, atom? I will, uh, will uh, stay there. Yeah, how, how you are, uh, you generate this? Uh, actually, you lose it. very likely will, you will lose it after some measurements, right? But the point here, you can restore it any time. So we know that I think that single atom doesn't is not like uh, yeah, stuck st st with the glue. You but need to. But to restore it, you have to just basically take a needle back to the uh, to to, to, to the, the FIM. You, uh, probably, yeah, you need the FIM attached to the system or something. Right. Yeah, in principle, this would work with uh, any mat metal, but the trick here, you need to find the appropriate etching gas. So far, we haven't uh, tested other gases, but I would say it would not work with any gas or any metal. Uh, um, because you need uh, a gas, an, etch an etching gas with uh, an ionization field close to the, uh, or less than the imaging field. Uh, but less than the evaporation field of the matter. If the ionization field of the gas is higher than the ev evaporation field of the metal, then you evaporate the tip atoms, the metal atoms, before you, you do anything. So you won't get to the same uh, tip structure. So, so it's important to, to find the right at etching gas. So here, yeah. prepare, talk about like a constant metal Yes. So You, uh, you, mean, you mean for tips, you can make tips from other materials? No, I mean, mm. use tons of tape. Yes. And do some work like for what kind of materials, like same film, or paints, or? Yeah, can I use the tip, for instance, in scanning the microscope, you can use it for? for, what? for any kind of material can use this. I'm not sure if I got your question, but you can use the tip, the tungsten tip, for any other applications you want, you know, for so you want to work with silicon, for instance, you want to... But here, for example, you can get some imaging, you can get the work information, you can use the to obtain. Okay, so these tabs, for instance, if you want to use them in a scanning tunnel microscope, you can image silicon su surface, you can image molecules, you can manipulate any kind of atoms or, uh, or molecules on the surface doesn't have to be tanks on anything. For, for an STM, you can use this tungsten tip to look at any material, any, any surface structure, any nanoparticles or molecules on the surface. Yes. Yes. Uh, that's a good question for, uh, if you want to use it as an electron source, that's what you mean? If you want to use it as an electron source? Yeah, uh, you can go up to one micro amps, no higher. <laughs> Otherwise, you go up the tip. So I can say below 100 uh, nano amps, it is safe. But over 100 nano, uh, nano amps, is, you, there's a high chance to melt or to blow up the uh, tip. Yeah. But, but uh, the current density is so high. When we talk about uh, 100 nanoamps, so the, the current density is higher than a few microamps in conventional electron sources. So wh what matters here is the current density. Yes. Excuse me, for the uh, free-pass assisted technique, you were in high vacuum, change the power of minus 7, 8, 12? No, yeah, we start with uh, good vacuum, but later we, it's not high vacuum anymore because we introduce uh, helium and nitrogen. Right, so the vacuum now is 
is higher because of the gases that we introduced into the chamber. So the, the, the vacuum will be around 10 to minus 5, but probably. Yes. And then, sorry. Yeah. So when you apply the high voltage to the, tip, to the tongue, yes, uh -huh. where is your uh, ground? The ground? The tip is at a high voltage, but the, the power supply is grounded. What do you mean? And the screen is, uh, the screen is grounded from one side. Okay. Yeah. The yeah, the, green, the, the ground is on the screen. Yeah, that's right. What's the significance of tungsten? I mean, I've only seen tungsten. It's just a, a very common material that we use. You know, people normally start uh, with the tungsten, but uh, we can try other materials. So no problem. Iridium? Uh, iridium? Uh, I haven't, uh, yeah, some people tried iridium, uh, palladium, like we said, uh, other materials. Yeah. But with this etching method, we, we have only tried uh, Thanks, Tom. Um, I can say I can't guarantee that it work. It would work with all materials. We have to specify two things. You know, the material, the ionization field of the material, and the ionization field or the uh, potential for the gas. So they have to match. Is so there something specific about the site that the the, uh, the the single atom is sitting on on the tip? Is it a fourfold site, for example, or? Three -fold Underneath, yeah, this depends on the, the orientation of the plane underneath. So if it is one, 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 it is yeah, three atoms. Yeah. If it is, uh, for instance, uh, one, one, zero, could be five yeah. or something like this. Yeah, it, dep it depends on the plane, under yeah, the, the orientation of the, of the last crystal on the, uh, on the tip, yeah. So most likely we get the, even if you start with a, a polycrystalline material, we, uh, we always end up with a single crystal because the size is very small. So we always end up but with different orientations. So the orientation can be any orientation. It can be 110, 111, 100. So the structure under, below this single atom depends on what is the orientation of the plane underneath. Um, that's what we are trying to do. Uh, the problem here is, here is with, uh, with shipping these tips and mounting these tips on other machines. We try to do this with other uh, collaborators like in McGill, for instance. We try to ship these tips, but when we get to the point, we want to, okay, I have this tip here, okay, we have single atom here, but okay, now I want to mount it on the tip holder of the other machine. The tip holder requires sometimes spot welding or cutting. So when you do this, most likely you lose the tip structure. And that's, so there's still some technical problems. And also we have the, another, uh, the same problem when we try to characterize these tips in, uh, for instance, in TM. When you want to mount it in uh, TM uh, stage or the grid, for instance, we, sometimes you need to do spot welding or gluing or something. And these uh, procedures, uh, most likely, the, kill the tip, you know, you contaminate the tip. There's still some technical problems with using these tips in other machines or characterizing them. Yeah. Any further questions? If not, I hope you'll join me in thanking Dr. Rezek. For Thank you for coming, guys. Thank you for coming.